What's going on you guys, Fulst here and I'm back with another video. In today's video I'll be doing an in-depth Olaf jungle guide. Olaf recently has become a lot more popular, he's starting to kind of rise in popularity. He's a very fun champion to play, in my opinion. He has really amazing 1v1 potential, he is a very scary jungler to face for anyone, just because he 1v1s you really easily. It's nearly impossible to beat an Olaf 1v1 unless you burst him. And his invade potential is really good. He has fast jungle clear speed and overall good objective control. Wait, hang on. Before we continue this video, I quickly want to introduce you guys to Quarterback, or also now known as Club.gg. This is an app where you can participate in certain challenges, max skills, max assist, best KDA, max CS, in three different types of maps, in the Summoner's Rift map, Aram and Aerof. Completing these challenges will give you coins, which can be used to buy skins, Join raffles, skins can also be discounted by leveling up in the app itself. And you can just buy literally any skin you want. You can go search for a Silas skin, every skin is there, maybe a Karthus skin, every skin is here. Also with the discounts, you can see here a normal skin that would be more expensive, otherwise it's now cheaper. You can simply just click it, select the summoner that you've linked to club.gg and then redeem your price to get your skin to your account. If you are interested in this app and want to join my club as well, that is possible. Just click the top link in the description, press the join club, then register and then press play for club. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Only thing Olaf is really lacking in is his gank power. Because the, you will do have your access to slow somebody down, but you don't really have any hard CC. So you have a little bit more issues in that type of situ situation. Now, of course, if your laners have more of the setup for it, then gank is going to be a lot easier. You might want to think something like a Tom Kench that can just uh, get a couple tongues on him, get the passive, stun him, and then eat him. It's a lot of CC, and it's going to be very easy for you to follow that up with a good amount of damage, and then slow them wherever Tom Kench kind of spits them out. So that's one of the examples. If your laner has CC or just good like gank pressure that way, Olaf is a very, very strong pick then. So, yeah, there are two rune options on Olaf. I do want to say that I prefer Conqueror, but I'll go over the other one. The other one is Predator. Uh, since Olaf has more trouble ganking, Predator is a good option to kind of counteract that a little bit because Predator allows you to be better at ganking. So if you're going with Predator, um, if you kind of like the Predator, I don't because I think Conqueror is better in general just for 1v1s to excel, uh, like to kind of make Olaf excel at those, those situations and just kind of take the hit on the gank front a little bit more. Then the rune page with Predator is Predator, cheap shot to go with the slows, so you have the um, your Axis or just the Blue Smite or something like that. Then cheap shot for the damage there. Zombie Ward in high elo games, eyeball collection in low elo games. You want to switch to eyeball collection in low elo games just because of the fact that there are no real wards being placed, so you're going to have less value of your Zombie Ward, if even at all. And the last one is always Ingenious Hunter to follow the Predator up to get that off cooldown faster. So that's just that. Now, um, that being said, this following this up with usually the secondary tree, there are two options as a secondary tree for Olaf. I will talk about both of them. Now, if you're going Predator, then going Magical Footwear is completely stupid and never do that. So if you're going for Approach Velocity, then just follow it up with like a Futures Market or something. You can also go Biscuits if you want. It's a little bit safer if you get lower HP. So let's say you're dueling somebody 1v1. You get low, you of course have a lot of extra lifesteal when you get low on attack speed as well with Olaf. But then the biscuit delivery will also be able to kick in and it restores on missing health. So if you use it then, you're going to have a little bit more sustain to get those 1v1s. So that would be an option then. But usually I just pick Futures Market to get to my items a little bit faster, to get to those power spikes just a little bit faster. But Approach Velocity is the main rune here. This allows you to chase people down a lot more effectively. So if you're facing, let's say, just any slippery champions just a lot of dashes whatever champion comes to mind maybe a rakan that has a lot of dashes if you then like slow him you can run to him a little bit faster or a lot faster and get in range so that's just one example there of course if i say champions with good escapes you probably know what i'm saying so in those situations you want to pick this up if the enemy however doesn't really have any good escapes or are just very immobile in general then the bone plating with revitalize becomes better because, well, you don't really need to chase them as much. You are going to have just enough sticking power as is. And this is going to just make you a lot tankier. The Revitalize works on your healing. So this is going to be a lot stronger. And then Bumplating is better for 1v1 situations. Now, um, the runes here are pretty straightforward. You just want to get double Adaptive Force with whatever fits into the enemy team best. 
So AP heavy is magic resist, AD heavy is armor, and woo, yeah, you can get this, but I then still tend to prefer armor in most cases if it's kind of equal. Now you don't want to get the attack speed on Olaf because you already have a lot of attack speed just in your kit in general. And there's really no need for it. You might as well get the double adaptive force to get more axe damage to get a faster jungle clear. So that's considering the second part. Now for the main runes that I do use is the Conqueror with Triumph. This combination is very good on Olaf. You tend to get pretty low on Olaf. So Triumph will also restore a lot of your missing health to be able to sustain through fights easier. Conqueror, Conqueror will also give you more lifesteal or just more sustain in general, which is very nice and also gets you extra damage as well. It's pretty easy to proc a Conqueror on Olaf just because of the sheer amount of attack speed you get. Landing an EQ is like two points of Conqueror and then just starting hitting them is going to be very quick Conqueror stacks and it's going to be pretty easy. Now here you do have a few options. You can go for the Tenacity one. You guys might think, why, why would you do that? Now, let's say they are really CC heavy. Sure, you do have your ultimate, but um, if they really have that much CC, you might just want to tank some of the CC before you actually use your ultimate. So in those situations, Tenacity can work. I rarely ever take it. The enemy team rarely has that much CC that Tenacity actually becomes still valuable. But that's just something I do want to say. Tenacity can be valuable into very heavy CC enemy teams. Now, the rune I prefer is the Bloodline one. But the rune that most people will probably take is the Alacrity. The reason I prefer the Bloodline one is because I've, um, in my opinion, Olaf has plenty of attack speed. Just straight out of his kit. That having more lifesteal to be able to get more lifesteal on low HP is a lot better. Also, getting the 12% lifesteal from this is very effective at actually allowing you to do a Baron a lot easier, for example, or just just 1v1ing people a lot easier when you get the lower HPs. So that's why I like Bloodline that much. Uh, if you want to go Alacrity, that's also an option. It's like a good solid rune. There's really not much else to be said about it. I just prefer the extra lifesteal from this. I think he has enough attack speed as is. Now, as the last one on Olaf, it's a pretty no-brainer lost stand, honestly. Because of the fact that you tend to want to one of you want people a lot. So the uh, situations you're going to be in, you're going to be lower HP. Olaf also excels at lower HPs. So last stand is kind of really what you're looking for. Um, it just does a lot more damage when you get lower. So the lower you get, the stronger you're going to get. Like you're going to be way stronger the lower HP. So you get your passive, you get your W's, lifesteal, you get everything combined with last stand. You're just going to shred through somebody if you get low HP at any point. And then again here, this is just for in a, like immobile comms. It gives you stronger 1v1 potential. Also synergizes really well with like a conqueror and that type. Of, so this is very solid that way. If you're against really like... Uh, hard to stick to champions, then approach velocity becomes the one you want with maybe a futures market or the biscuit delivery system. So that's pretty much it for the runes on Olaf. Let's just get right into the item build now. All right, so for the item build on Olaf, you have two possible starting items and they are for different situations. You have the talisman and the, uh, the machete. Both of them will work as a starting item of Olaf, but both of them will be combined with the refillable potion. Now, the difference between these is if you are starting red buff, you want to get the talisman. If you are starting blue buff, you want to get the machete. Uh, the reason for this is if you don't take the talisman and you're starting red buff, you're not going to have enough mana sustain for your axes to be effective. So your jungle clear is going to take a really big hit if you don't have that. So if you're starting blue buff, then the machete is just going to be your best option because you have the blue to sustain your mana pool and you're fine. Now, as soon as you get through your first clear, you're going to back for the uh, first smite enchant anyway, which is the, like just the blue smite enchant is the one I want. Um, you can also go red smite on Olaf, but I find that just his 1v1 potential is already more than great. However, if you are facing just a heavy um, 1v1 champions that don't really have that many escapes, then Red Smite does become valuable because then it's better to try to 1v1 them if they really can't get away from you that easily. However, if the champions are more flimsy or just try to want to get away from you, then Stalker's Blade becomes a better option to just like kind of stick to them a little bit better. So again, both options count, but this is the first one you want to back for because this is going to allow you to have your talisman and your machete to be able to clear very, very easily. Now, just picking up this upgrade is also uh, already going to be able to allow you to do dragon really easily by yourself. So that's a very good objective to want to look for, maybe. If it's an infernal first, then definitely it's a good option. The other dragons you might want to consider maybe bathing towards it instead of just running to it. But yeah, that's just something I wanted to mention. So just... 
Talisman on a red side start and the Machete on a blue buff start. Now, I do want to mention that the blue buff start is faster. It has a better clear potential, so it's better to, for jungle efficiency and clear speed, it's better to go Machete and start blue buff so that you um, yeah get your experience down faster. So that is completely up to you. It might differ on games that starting one side is better than the other because you might want to pressure the top side, for example. Let's say you're blue side on the map and you want to gank top first. Then you can do a talisman red buff start and clear towards the top side. If you, for example, are starting on the other side of the map and you want to gank top first, you can do a machete start and clear top faster and then gank top lane that way. So it's completely whatever fits, whatever lane you want to gank the first or whatever you want to do really. So that's the options there. Now the main upgrade here is the warrior enchant. Whether you go blue or red, I'm just going to take the warrior enchant. Uh, this is the best one to go for on Olaf. You see some Olafs going for the Cinderhawk enchant. If you are going purely based on solo queue, that's definitely not worth it. If you are maybe going more, leading more towards competitive play, then Cinderhulk might have some cases where it's good. But really what you want is that damage and just pushing that 1v1 potential against somebody. And Warrior is definitely the best one to go with that. AD skills pretty good on Olaf. It also skills with his true damage, so the more AD you have, the more true damage you will do. And just overall 1v1 potential, the Warrior is king. And that's really why you do want to just get Warrior. Now, um, following this up, the boots option on Olaf is very straightforward. It is 99.9% .9 of the time named Tabais. Again, the only exception is when you also pick the tenacity in your runes if the enemy team is insanely CC heavy. Like completely ridiculously CC heavy that you might consider tanking some CC and just ulting some other CC or something like that. Then mercs become the option combined with the tenacity rune. But that's, that's like... 0.001% of games it rarely happens that the enemy team is that cc heavy worth for that to be actually worth it so it, it, well the percentage might be a little bit higher it might be a little bit exaggerated but you know what i'm saying so ninja tab is most of the options because you do have the ultimate to cancel out all cc if you want to and this is just going to block the most damage so that's just that and that's uh, oh, yeah just wanted to mention that now this is just our initial olaf has a pretty linear build when it comes to building after this so there is really not much to vary. The main item you always want to get is Black Cleaver. You stack this up really quickly. You get the armor pen really easily. And uh, it's just really good with CDR on your access and your true damage and just everything in general. This item provides you everything you want. Move speed, armor pen, CDR, health, attack damage. Perfect item on Olaf. Just amazing. And always the item you want to get. Now to follow this up, you can go for two items, but you will probably build both anyway. Now, something that I do want to mention, you do have the option of between Sterex and the Maw. If the enemy team is more magic, like damage heavy, you definitely want to get the magic resist from the Maw. So the, then going for a Sterex in that situation would not be worth it because um, you do not want to get a double lifeline passive. So if the enemy team is very magic damage heavy, then Maw becomes the option. And then that's the one you just want to go with like regardless. Now then, of course, if you build a Maw, you do not want to build a Sterex after that. Most likely the item you're going to get after these, uh, after this option between the Maw and the Sterex is the Righteous Glory. Righteous Glory is an amazing item on Olaf. You can pop Righteous Glory alongside your ultimate and just speed run through uh, the enemy team towards, let's say, their mid laner or their AE carry. Instantly kill them really quickly before they're even able to do anything about it. Because you can just land an axe, they might be able to flash away, but you're just running at them at immense speed that it's not going to matter. And this is just really effective. Also gives you CDR, which is very nice. It gives you a good amount of armor. And yeah, that's just, this just kind of allows you to assassinate somebody or just do the engage for your team that way. This also just helps with the engage again, because Olaf doesn't really have a hard CC way for, um, like, like, he doesn't have like a Giovanni ultimate or something. So Righteous Glory helps in those situations with that. So that that's an item there. So whether you picked up these ones is kind of whatever. And then you want to finish it up with a Righteous Glory. Now as a final item, it's kind of a situational tank item. Uh, I tend to prefer Stone Plate. The reason for that is you on Olaf are running into the enemy team a lot. So you get 80 armor, 80 magic resist of that. You can also activate this. So you can run in with like, let's say Righteous Glory. Run at the AD carry, maybe one shot the AD carry with like your E and then just uh, a couple auto decks, another E and he's probably already dead. Like you do so much damage with the setup you have, then you can easily poke a stone plate and walk out of that situation if you want. 
or you're just going to be able to soak a lot of damage if they try to focus you down, which they tend to try to want to focus the Olaf down, just them like Olaf running at their ADK is pretty scary, and then you can just use your stone plate to soak the damage up that way. So I find this to be a very effective item. You already, if you were to go for this build like this, every single item here gives health. So the just straight stats from this armor and magic resist is going to be very effective upon the health you already built. And then also activating this is going to double your health as well. So it's a very effective and also cost effective um, tank item. So this is usually the one I would pick up, but in some games there are better options. Let's say uh, you're facing a lot of magic damage heavy teams so you have the maw here and then they still like let two or three you can also get an adaptive helmet and then this will block out subsequent magic damage as well so this is just going to make you a lot more tankier into those teams and that would be something to consider there now also if they do have just a lot of crit damage uh, so yasso mid lane with like 80 carry that just crits a lot maybe a graves jungle even that tends to crit a lot then of course Red Renduins also becomes a very good tank option as well. And that is pretty much it for the options. Now, sure, Thormill becomes a very good option if they have healing comps. So let's say Vladimir or I mean just any champion that tends to rely on lifesteal works. So then Thormill becomes a very good last tank item as well. And that's pretty much the variable tank item slot. In most games, I tend to still go for stone plate though, just because of the overall value of the item at the price. It's 2,500 gold and you tend to run in on Olaf with Righteous Glory anyway. So this is going to be a very cost effective item. It's going to allow you to tank a lot of damage. And yeah, that's just really the build on Olaf. I guess if you guys have any questions, put those in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. If you guys have enjoyed this video so far, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button. It really helps me a lot. If you guys have guide suggestions as well, put those in the comments. And yeah, let's just get right into the gameplay section now. All right, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I am playing Olaf into a Shaco. Olaf is a very strong jungler at the moment. He is starting to get more traction as well, getting more popular in general. The strong points about Olaf is that he's just very, very good at just 1v1ing any jungler or just anyone in general, not just a jungler. He has a passive that will give him more lifesteal. The lower he gets, he gets more attack speed that way as well. So it's going to be pretty much impossible to actually duel this guy. And that's why he's that strong. And also with Conqueror, you're going to be able to just deal a good amount of extra damage. So yeah, the, there are two possible clear paths or clear starts on Olaf, which one of them is starting, as you can see, the red buff. If you're starting red buff, you definitely want to try to get the Hunter's, or not try, you just want to get the Hunter's Talisman, because then with this Hunter's Talisman, you're going to have enough mana sustain to still get through pretty much your entire clear with your Axis. And yeah, if you are starting blue buff, however, then you can easily just go for the Machete. Because the blue will then sustain your mana with 40 axes. And then, you, of course, you're going to do a lot of auto attacks. So you're still, um, with the machete, then going to do more damage with those auto attacks. So it is faster on Olaf to start blue buff. But if your goal is to maybe gank bot lane early. Or look for pressure towards the bottom side of the map. Then you want to look towards um, starting red buff with a talisman and clearing down. Now, of course, if you're the other side of the map, then going for Machete, starting blue and running down is then f faster, of course, still. So you can opt for that as well. If you would then want to get top line pressure from blue side, then you want to start the red buff and then with a the talisman. So that's just one thing to note. Talisman is for red buff start, then Machete is for blue buff start. And both are viable. Now, as you can see, I started W because initially you use too much mana to just use your access on the initial camp. So that's not really what I'm looking for. I'm just going to go with a W and then just clear it that way, which is more than fast enough. Now right here, I opt for a top line pressure. It's a Tom Kench lane, which makes it like pretty free. Honestly, the Darius is already very, very low and I have red buff. So there's really not much he can do. Also killing a dude that doesn't have teleports really going to hurt his lane. So all we got to do at that point is push this wave out. And then we can just uh, push this and he loses a lot. So this puts Darius very, very far behind. And that's just really good for us. Now I'm going to just change my to red side. There we go. 
Now, on the initial back, I get my Blue Smite. Blue Smite, like, just having the Machete and the Talisman is very, very good on Olaf. And then also having the Blue Smite is just really, really nice. Now, the Blue Smite is the Smite I prefer just because of the fact that it allows me to stick to people a little easier. Sure, if you hit your Axis, then Red Smite is going to be fine as well. But in general, I just prefer the Blue Smite. Your 1v1 potential is already really good. And yeah, that's just nice in general now also one thing to take note i do because i go for display right here because the darius was really low and he was just a good like opportunity for me to actually gank him i do sacrifice my blue buff because pretty much any jungler would then just run to your both side and go and take that if they see you were just level two with red buff on top lane so that's something to take note of i did like lose my blue for that however the shaco then kind of decided to one v one on olaf which is a big mistake. Like, this is just the power of Olaf. He's so good at one running something. So, I figured he did blue just recently. So, he's probably clearing Scuttle. Which, I mean, looks like he just is. So, I just start hitting him at this point. He just uh, pretty much dies to me. There's really nothing I can like he can do against me. If he, even if he tries to all-in fight me, there's really nothing he can do. Now, the only unfortunate part there is that the Thresh takes the kill. My Q would have gotten the kill on the Shaco, which would have allowed me to kill him and get the blue buff. So that was a little bit unfortunate, but it's really not that big of a deal. So I just, this is what Talisman is good for. Sustain your mana. However, do take note that you see that I'm not using my axes as much. The reason for this is I don't have blue. I don't have the greatest mana sustain. So I definitely have to be a little bit more careful with my axes. Maybe use them like one or two times on a camp instead of just spamming it. Because, yeah, it's just a waste to, uh, to keep using your axes. You're going to have no mana left and that's not ideal. Now again, just clear Scuttle, look for a gank on Adarius again, he is just pushing a little bit too far, it's again a Tom Kench lane, so it's really impossible for him to get away from that, and it, as you can see, he literally just dies. I just got the E on him, true damage, and he's gone. Now push this in again, and this pretty much means that Darius is completely fucked in this lane, there is not much they can do, uh, the Tom Kench is just going to be able to kill him every time now, because he just lost so many waves of experience into his turret. I believe at the total of waves he lost by now is about six waves. Uh, sorry, that's a little bit much. Uh, three, four, about five, four to five waves is probably probably what he's what he's realistically lost in turret experience wise. So that's really really good. Now right here the um, situation I see the Shaco guarding top lane, so I'm like, all right, well he's probably gonna walk into his top side jungle. As you can see from his HP as well, which is what I've noticed, he's about half. Doesn't really have too much mana. So I'm just going to walk in. I think he might do Gromp. I'm going to wait a little bit. Maybe he walks this way for some reason. He didn't. So he's probably going to go towards his Gromp, which is what I assumed. Then I'm just going to stand in this brush, wait for him to use the most skills he can on this Gromp. So he uses as much uh, mana as possible. And I'm going to just go in in time for the um, Smite skill on this Gromp. He Smites it too early. So it's really good for me. I can just throw an X and I just get it. And at this point, there's really no way he can contest me. I just got a free Gromp out of it. Now, moving on from here, I'm just going to clear my camps here. As you can see, I am still being a little bit sparingly on the Axis. Because I don't want to waste my mana too much. So I'm just using uh, a, the right amount of Axis to actually clear a camp effectively. Whilst not just spamming Axis to lose all my mana for no reason. So that's a very th important thing to note if you don't have a blue buff on Olaf. Make sure you don't waste your Axis and use them at the right time. At the right amount now as soon as you get to a warrior you get a bit very very big power spike on olaf and it's going to be pretty easy for you to just run anyone down so i'm looking to play very aggressive in this situation so yeah now really here what i'm going for is the blue buff getting a blue on olaf pretty much allows that you to just spam your axis as you can see now i mean it was a little bit fast but i'm as soon as i get the blue i'm gonna just start spamming axis like there's no tomorrow thresh gets me into this fight right here we get the Trist for free. That's a very good gank. Very easy gank to pull off. As soon as Thresh Lanterns you in, you can throw an Axe, which then is going to slow anyone, really, that you target. And going from there, you can easily just, uh, yeah, run a fight down, really. Get the Axe on this guy. And we just finish that, clean that up pretty easily. Now, with Olaf, I'm currently 3-0-2. Um, yeah, right here. I'll go back a little bit further. So in this situation, I could just, I'm pretty much full HP. I'm a very scary dude. I have my jungle item completed and I'm level seven. So this pretty much means that I, they will pretty much be nearly impossible to fight me. Right there, they both die. Uh, the dragon is pretty much free for, for, for us. Now I get hit by the locks binding here. 
I just press my ultimate because, uh, well, you can press your ultimate whilst you're CC to instantly remove the CC. That's usually the situation you kind of want to wait for. You don't just want to use your ultimate randomly if you're not going to get CC'd or are already CC'd because then you're, yeah, well, of course you're still going to be able to run it down, but you always kind of try to predict when the CC is about to hit you or you can look at when the CC is about to hit you and then press ultimate or when it already hit you and then press ultimate. As long as you click it fast enough and don't waste the CC too long on you, you're fine. All right, here I just flash over the wall and just do as much damage to the locks as possible. So when I get her down, also, right in this situation, if I didn't press my ultimate here, I could have died to Lux because of the fact that I might have been in E-range, as you can see right here. That's also the main reason I pressed ultimate. I don't like wasting my ultimate on Olaf. Oh, I just pressed backspace for no reason. I don't like wasting my ultimate on Olaf. Just use it whenever it's necessary. And right here in this scenario, as you can see, it snares me. It, at this point, Lux E is kind of debatable range, so this might still hit me which is a little bit troll, but I wasn't going to risk it. Sure, this looks like it's not going to hit me, and I was like, it's probably not going to hit me, but with some ranges in the game, it's a little bit bigger than the indicator actually shows, so I just want to press ultimate so I don't get hit. Yeah, of course, you see, I saw it on Thresh, I was a little bit in front of him, it didn't hit, so I was fine either way, but in this case, I just built flash over the wall and then kill her. So just use your ultimate in situations where you think it's necessary. In that situation, I was like, is that Loxy going to hit me? Probably not, but I'm still just going to use it. Might as well, like, better safe than sorry is really the one that one you want to go with there. Well, I'm actually curious in this situation. Because uh, I remember this, and I was wondering if they actually had vision on me. Now, sure, this Draven played this very obvious that I was in that brush, but I'm kind of curious if they have a ward. I had this running, so there is no wards for them anywhere near. So the Draven just played it too obvious, and the Triss was way too careful. All right, good to know. I mean, playing like this when your jungler is right here is a little bit questionable, I would say. Like, just play it a bit normally. Go, like, walk r about here and kite the minions there. Then the Triss might actually jump on you and we can kill her. But, like, this is just really troll. Oh, wait. Actually, does that spot me? That might have spotted me. Let's see. God damn it. No, that didn't spot me. All right. Then, yeah, it, I mean, Draven just made it way too obvious. Let's, so let's be honest here. She just jumps away, and uh, yeah, we get, kind of get collapsed on. I die. Not the greatest. It's a bit too obvious of a bait. I should have probably backed out of that situation a little bit quicker, but uh, what can you do, right? Alright, here, just going back to clear my camps. Again, making sure that I use my axes as sparingly as possible while still keeping my jungle clear speed up. The ideal state for you to be at is about half mana before you go into any fight, so be, make sure to take note of that. As soon as you look for fights, try to be at about half mana when you're walking around. As you can see, I'm not using my axes past really half mana. There's really no point in that. That's just going to take too much mana. You're going to be left with no mana to fight. And that's not really what you're looking for. All right, there. I do get CC, but I don't want to waste my ultimate because there's really no reason for it. Now, the Tom Kench isn't top lane. Darius was there and the Lux was walking that way. So there's really no way for me to actually fight that properly. All right, here, this is why I like Blue Smite that much, because it kind of allows me to slow someone with Blue Smite, and then after that, slow them with Axis. I just run him down really, really easily. As you can see right there, he unfortunately has the stop parts, which pretty much means she kind of lives through that one for no reason. Uh, I would have easily one-shot her if she didn't stop parts in that situation, but because of the stop parts, it gave the Darius time to kind of stack his uh, bleed procs and get his ultimates off. So that was really, like, a good stop parts from Lux, but unfortunate for me. Valkos is currently 8 and 1, doing pretty well. I'm 4 2 and 4, which is decent. I made like the mistake on bot lane of overstaying a little bit. I have 94 CS, which is also a big thing to note. Olaf is very good at clearing his camps, so make sure you keep that rotation going just because he's that good at it and he's going to be really fast. Now, the note, the important thing to note with axes, um, throw them as close to you as possible while still hitting the target. If the target is running away, then you, of course, have to extend the range on your axe to be able to hit him and then also kind of kite through the same path. But if he's right here, there's no reason in throwing your axe all the way there, if you know what I'm mean saying. So if he's walking towards you or if enemies are close, just throw their axe right next to you and just try to pick it up from that range right there. So you can see right there, all I have to do is set like one step pick to pick up my axe. And that's really the situation you're looking for. So that's one important thing to note on Olaf. Don't throw your axes just away for no reason. And yeah. So, again, as you can see right here, he comes in. I throw my axe as close to me as possible, really. And all I have to do to follow this up is set one step higher to pick that axe up again. 
Now Triss jumps into me again foolishly, which costs her a lot of HP. My Conqueror was already pretty much procced, so there was really no fighting that. Now the only thing, the only reason I'm backing off from this Darius right here is because of the backup from Brand and Trist he could have. So right here, I'm just going to play it a little bit more careful and just respect the fact that um, he might have backup from, like, of course they, they stayed, but in this situation it's just better to play it a little bit safe. I am two levels up on the Darius, there's no way he's 1v1ing me, especially if you land your Q and actually stick to the, close to the Darius. If uh, you... If you allow the Darius to get the blades on you, so you get blades from his Q, then you might have problems, but apart from that, you can literally just run him down. And if you have ultimate, then he's not going to be able to hook you or CC you either. So it's going to be really hard for him to actually kill you before he dies himself. Now, one important thing to note as well with Olaf is you want to make sure you, um, before you start actually auto-attacking somebody, use your E. So the E will go off cooldown by every single auto-attack you land with your uh, swing. So, it will go one second lower every auto attack, so literally just Q to somebody and then E him instantly before you start auto attacking. You're going to have your E back up and you're going to be able to do a lot more damage with this. Uh, later levels, this can easily add up to about eight to 900 true damage on a single target in a single 1v1 fight. So you'll leave with E, do a couple auto attacks and then finish him with E and that's the way you want to do it. So yeah, now right here making sure that I keep my clear, uh, my clear going keep the clear strong 106 yet which is very nice which is kind of on par with my solo laners sure in this specific game my solo laners really don't have that much farm and honestly they're doing pretty poorly they're like 40 cs behind pretty much all of them so but for a jungler this amount of cs is very nice with the amount of kill participation i have so yeah Ooh, wait what hello Oh, right. I was trying to hit that axe on Shaco. That was very troll. All right. Just, yeah. All right. I don't know if anything to say about that. It was just like, all right, so sure. Fuck it. Uh, Darius again walking up to Lin a little bit too far. All I have to do is really run towards him with a Tom Kench and I just execute him real quick. 6 2 and 5. I'm a very strong Olaf right now. There's really no way the enemy team can actually 1v1 or 1v2. They, they might actually also have a lot of trouble 1v2ing me. I'm very strong at this point. Proc and Conqueror will give me a lot of lifesteal as well. Yeah. Look, just looking for pressure right now. That's really all we're doing. Just looking for maybe a catch, maybe a team fight. They get caught in mid lane. Uh, I just kill somebody and run out with ultimate. There was really not much to, for me to fight in that situation. There's no reason to uh, try to go too aggressive in there. I might have been able to finish more people off here in this fight, by the way. But I'll just go back and, uh, yeah, th this fight specifically. So, my Valkos died, my Draven died, and my Thresh is about about to die. Um, th this guy is really low, so all I really have to do is kind of walk up to him. And I believe I just E him. Get the true damage hit on him. Right here... I get CC'd, I instantly proc my ultimate because I don't want to stand still too long to be able to tank free damage from them. And at this point, I might have been able to run this Trist down, but if I then ran this way, they would have definitely run after me. And sure, I might have been able to kill this Trist, but it would not be worth dying because I have a bounty she doesn't. So it's still an unfavorable trade for me, and that's why I just decided to run out. I had to ult in that situation because with the locks binding, I could have been finished by them, and that's really not what you're looking for. So ult when necessary. We're just making sure that I keep my clear going. Uh, I am sitting on currently 2400 gold. We do want to get this dragon real quick. Yeah, no, my Nacheco just ended that one away. I gotta say, there's really not much else about it. Also, another great thing about Olaf is you can easily 2 mana Baron. Uh, because Olaf gets a lot of lifesteal the lower he gets. If you are far enough ahead on Olaf, you can also solo the Baron. Because of the fact that you just get that much lifesteal, the lower you get, you also get more attack speed that way. So you're going to easily sustain yourself back up. Usually this kind of requires maybe a Vamp Scepter at least to get yourself that little bit of extra lifesteal to be able to get over the threshold of actually healing more than Baron can deal damage to you. But generally just being able to two-man it is more than fine. You can easily tank it. The, more, the less HP you get, the more lifesteal and attack speed you get. So you can heal everything back in those situations. And you should be fine. Right here, I have the enough gold for the back on Sterex. 
and this is pretty much when you become unkillable when you can run somebody down if you're far ahead like that and yeah it, it kind of just is over and uh, Olaf is very heavy pressure champion early to mid game the sooner the late game starts kicking in the weaker Olaf gets you're not going to be able to duel like anyone that easily anymore and that's something you're just going to have to take note of Olaf is a very early game oriented jungler it's going to be very crucial that you pressure the enemy jungler down as much as possible as you can see that I did with his Shaco in this specific game he has a lot of deaths he doesn't really like he is behind in CS he got pressured down I could have pressured him down a little bit more but then again I got a good amount of free ganks on the Darius as well so I kind of split my focus between the Shaco and the Darius a little bit more than actually just uh, invading Shaco constantly Now here, getting low on Olaf really isn't that big of an issue. As you can see, I am pretty low right now, but all I have to do is get to a camp, as you can see, or just anything in general, start hitting it, and I'm pretty much full HP again. Now, this doesn't matter if that's a camp, or if you get 1v1 by maybe, or just jumped on by maybe one of the enemy champions. If you're like 30% HP, you're more than fine to just live on, and just press W, start life stealing back, and it's really impossible for them to kill you actually at 30% unless they burst you down. So in that situation, I just press my ultimate to make sure that the brand doesn't get an EQ on me or something like that. And I just run up to him and kill him for yeah, pretty much free in that situation. All right, here the enemy team just completely respawns. So ideally, we kind of want to look towards maybe backing a little bit here. It's a little bit greedy to overextend this because, of course, they just backed. And we're sitting on a lot of gold, as you can see. Draven has like 3k, I have like 1.7. Same goes for Tom Kench. Now sure we do have Baron and we are a fair amount stronger, but as you can see if the enemy Triss get like free damage on us, it's gonna get to the riskier stage. And yeah, we as you we kind of lose the fight here a little bit. So they we we definitely had the back in that situation. Maybe we could have ended if we focused the Nexus down, but overall it was just a smarter way to go back in that uh, specific case. And Draven has a lot of money as you can see, 4.5k. So yeah. Now the next item. I mean, I'm going for, say, Righteous Glory. Righteous Glory on Olaf pretty much allows you to run down anyone. And in this stage in the game, that's really what you're looking for. Just to put that ultimate, run somebody, like, run the AD carry down. There's not, you know, like, right here. This is a perfect example of just running the AD carry down. Now, the Tristan usually has a knockback, but on Olaf, that doesn't matter. As you can see, I just blue smite him. That's also why I really like blue smite. So, if the enemy has, like, mobility and it's harder to land that action initially, then you can blue smite him. Try to start chasing him down and of course your ult also gives move speed and you will not be able to get cc'd away and then as soon as they use their mobility you throw the axe right after them so they will not be able to dodge it and that's the perfect way to chase and that's why i like blue smite that much and some olafs might be like well red smite is better for 1v1 potential but i'd say that the um, 1v1 potential you have is already massive so there's really no reason to actually get the red smite over the blue smite while the chase potential or the sticking potential is the main thing you're looking for now my team wanted to try to pressure for this Nexus end, which, I mean, could have happened. But overall, the safer play is just to go for the Baron, as you can see. Just uh, duoing the Baron is very easy. This is a perfect example of it. So I'll just, uh, yeah, quickly take the red, go over with the plant. And I can easily tank this. The lower I get, the more damage you do to Baron. And the Baron just goes down really quickly. Now, the, of, the, the Tom Kench dies there, but it doesn't necessarily matter. We have the Baron now, so we can just, with the next push, kind of go in. It would have been a better play to just take the Baron and end that way. It's a little bit of a safer play. Sure, we might have been able to just end it straight up. But there's no reason to just um, play it the non-safe way, if you know what I'm saying. It doesn't really take that much effort to actually take the Baron there. And that's pretty much game, honestly. The main things with Olaf is just the fact that you have to create that early pressure. Make sure that you put that pressure down. Try to invade the enemy jungler as much as possible. Or just contest them on Scuttlecrafts at all times. It's very hard for you to actually get 1v1. So also with like champions that are very immobile, like Darius, for example. It's a very easy gank. Or like a Lux. They, I had the advantage this game of having the Lux and the Darius against me. That don't really have any escape potential in their lanes. So I can easily just go into a lane like that, hit like an axe or maybe a blue smite and start hitting axes from there. And that's going to be a very easy kill. The enemy jungler will not be able to 1v1 you just simply because you're Olaf. It doesn't matter if it's if I'm facing Shaco or if I'm facing 
just anything in general, like even a Lee Sin or an Elise or just early game focused champions that are very good in that stage, really struggle against Olaf just because he has that much 1v1 potential and it's really, really hard to kill an Olaf. So make sure you pressure that advantage through and punish the enemy jungler for like any type of ganks, take his camps, you're doing the camps really, really quickly, just live in the enemy jungle as much as you can. And if that's not the specific game and it's more like a game like this, like this, where you can actually like camp a lane very effectively, then that's also a very solid play whilst still pressuring the enemy jungler down. So that's pretty much Olaf for you. It's a very straightforward champion. The main thing you have to take note of or get used to is hitting those axes and making sure that you uh, path your camps efficiently enough to have enough farm because Olaf does require some items to be like pretty effective. Uh, anyway, guys, if you guys have any questions on Olaf, make sure to put those in the comments below. If you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button as well. Helps a lot. And yeah, see you guys in the next video. Bye.